So today we're taking a look at something that I have been very excited about. We are taking a look at the B-Link SCR6. Now this is rocking a Ryzen 5 6600H that is paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM running at 4800 megahertz. And it does have a 500 gigabyte PCIe 4 SSD. Now the thing I'm most excited about is the fact that the 6600H in this system is rocking the AMD Radeon 660M that is RDNA 2 based. And that is really very exciting to me because of the fact that I have been very much looking forward to testing out RDNA 2 based iGPUs in comparison to the old Vega architecture. So we're going to be able to actually do some straight up comparison between the SCR5 and the SCR6, but that'll be in another video. Right now we're going to be just taking a look at how this performs in a few games as we delve deeper into the system itself. And actually opening up the system from the packaging, overall it seems to be about the exact same size as the SCR5 series, though now the top cover itself is actually a very nice looking color and design here and it actually comes with a swappable top if you want to go with the red color for it but i personally find this to look absolutely perfect and overall i am a huge fan of this b-link design and here you could look at it right next to the ser5 they are pretty much identical when it comes to size it really just comes down to the much more powerful internals in the new one and we're actually going to test it out on a few games right now because i am so excited to see rdna to iGPUs in action. And starting off the testing, here we have Atomic Heart, a game that I've been testing out a lot in a wide variety of different systems. And so far, this has been the best performing one by far when it comes to an iGPU. We are at the lowest in-game graphics settings, but at the full 1080p resolution using FSR with the balance preset. And like this, we are able to get a pretty fantastic level of performance in the interior areas. And there's really very little to complain about here especially since our one percent lows are at such a comfortable range of course if we do go into the exterior areas we do take a bit of a hit in terms of performance but it never really drops down to a range that is unplayable which means that across the board the game itself is actually going to be very doable and we don't even have to use the performance preset for fsr which really ruins visual quality being able to stick to balance is the most ideal situation here and if you just pay attention to those frame time charts they are pretty fantastic over Overall, a fantastic showing for this iGPU, and we're going to continue on to some other games. Now, taking a look at a much lighter title, but one of the most popular ones on Steam, if not the most popular game, we have CSGO here. Now, of course, you're looking at a bot match because of the fact that the game itself does not allow an overlay like MSI Afterburners if you're going to be playing anything where you access an online service. So any online game or anything like that, I will not be able to do with the overlay on but I can't do a bot match. So this is a worst case scenario for 1% lows really because bot matches tend to impact the 1% lows the most. When you're actually playing a game, you're going to expect even better performance than this, but the averages that we're getting already are really fantastic. And just look at those frame times. Those charts are looking pretty great, even in a worst case scenario like this. So overall, you're going to be able to play the most popular game on Steam perfectly fine here, taking full advantage of a high refresh rate display a pretty fantastic showing for one of the most popular games in the world another extremely popular shooter out there is of course rainbow six siege which you can see running here with the lowest in-game graphics settings at 1080p with fsr set to the performance preset if you look at those frame time charts they look spectacular and our averages are also fantastic so it's another situation where you're going to be able to take advantage of a high refresh rate display and get a great experience out of it in general though fsr is really not that necessary here at all you can get away with just setting it to either balanced or quality or just turning it off completely because you're still going to be able to get a more than adequate enough fps out of the game itself but in general another fantastic showing for this little igpu now hopping over to doom 2016 we can take a look at it in a pretty fantastic scenario where we're rocking this at the full 1080p resolution no need to use any kind of resolution downsampling 
sampling and we are at the lowest in-game graphics settings though you can always turn up the textures but in general the performance that we're getting here is pretty fantastic we're not quite hitting a 60 fps average but the numbers that we're reaching right now are at a range where very little people are going to actually have anything to complain about and you're going to be able to actually have a blast playing this game perfectly fine it really is another fantastic showing and in general it's showing that this system has quite a lot of power to it and at the price point that it's at we're currently available right now it's starting to get really competitive and we'll jump on over to another first person shooter here we have ready or not running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we do have fsr set to the balance preset and in general this is one of the most impressive showings that i've seen so far with our one percent lows being at a pretty great range as well as our averages but it's really those frame time charts that blew me away the most it is so smooth so consistent this is an absolutely great result to see and it really shows that this igpu has quite a lot of power and we're not even looking at the full rdna2 igpu here we're talking about only six cores in comparison to the 12 that are in the 680m but i suspect that this 660m is actually giving us very close to the level of performance of the full igpu if it's anything like how vega was there is diminishing returns to the core count just because of the fact that we're going to be memory limited anyway in terms of bandwidth but in general this is still a fantastic result and it has me very curious to see how the ser6 pro series actually ends up performing because if this is the result we're getting right now i can only imagine what having a few more gpu cores and a higher clock speed would actually end up giving us and for right now the last game i want to take a look at is pubg here you're looking at the game running with the lowest in-game graphics settings at 1080p vote but we do have a render resolution target of 70 percent of that so we are closer to a 720p experience than we are to a 1080p one but visually speaking the game still looks very playable and the performance that we're getting here is actually pretty fantastic it's one of the best results that i've seen so far of pubg on an igpu and in general it does feel like a completely different experience in comparison to what we've seen so far so far it seems like rdna2 is actually living up to the hype and especially now that we're starting to get these systems at a price point that is more competitive so far with everything that i'm seeing i'm really liking this b-link ser6 mini pc but you might be asking yourself well should i get this or should i go with the ser5 what is the performance difference between the two what you should know is that between the all of the different models of the ser5 the closest competitor to this is the 5600h now in terms of cpu performance we're actually not looking at any real difference between the two both of them are based off of the same architecture it's pretty much the same exact ipc so in general the performance difference between the two is in the single digits to the point where you could pretty much say that it is practically identical what really differentiates this between the ser5 is just the fact that the rdna2 igpu is just significantly better in terms of performance this is pretty much just at the top of the stack in terms of what you can get with a ryzen 5 especially at this price point it really is just dominating levels of performance so where i stand on this is pretty simple i think that at the price point that it's at the ryzen 5 5600h version is really compelling but the 6600h is starting to see some pretty crazy discounts so honestly picking up an ser6 right now would not be a bad move but i am going to do a more detailed comparison between this and the ser e5 all of the different models that i have here as well as i'm going to compare it with the 5500u laptop that i have so stay tuned for each and every single one of those individual videos be sure to be subscribed for that this is pretty much just a quick look at the ser6 right now as we're going to go into deeper comparisons between the two but it really seems like b link is having a very interesting product stack right now because they also are actually making a version of the ser5 with a 5800h and it's supposed to be at the same price point as the 5600h so that thing makes this a lot more interesting and compelling because we are talking about now a faster cpu than what is in the ser6 but with a slower igpu so b link if you're watching this i would love to get sent one of those models i would love to take a look at it and compare it here and see where exactly it lands on the product stack so shoot me an email if you're interested in that but anyways i will catch you guys in the next one